Greetings and salutations. Welcome back. We're doing it live on another Q&A call here at DeFord Insurance Group. I am your humble correspondent for this uh, fantastic hour of questions answered in the insurance business. My name is Dave DuFord, so welcome to those of you who are new to the channel and those who have uh, been here as longtime subscribers and purveyors of my edutainment. Thank you kindly for being here. Of course, the, uh, the beginning of this, the purpose of this call is to kind of answer your questions live, uh, to help you kind of navigate through the wild world of selling insurance, hopefully successfully, so that you don't end up like a statistic like so many other people. And uh, I implore you to uh, leave your questions below in the chat. And as we progress through this thing, I'm gonna be reading your questions live and uh, answering them live for you. Again, uh, any and all questions are completely on the table as long as it relates to selling or marketing any kind of insurance product. Of course, you can ask about what we do at DeFord Insurance Group, like how we train and recruit agents nationally to sell final expense, Medicare annuities, or ACA. That's always welcome. And, uh, but, but before we get into any of that, uh, we're going to do a little special segment here momentarily uh, called Comments from the Haters. Uh, I do accumulate hate messages uh, throughout the year, and every once in a while, I like to use that as fodder <laughs> to start off one of my Q&A calls, so it should be fun. We're going to get to that in just a second. A couple of announcements, of course. Uh, first of all, a couple of upcoming activities. Uh, we have our Elite Agent Summit coming up on August 26th in Atlanta, Georgia, and also September 23rd in Dallas, Texas, if you are interested and uh, joining uh, those events. They're just 50 bucks when you put in the discount code EAS50 at the coupon checkout. We keep them affordable because we have the carriers uh, do a lot of the sponsoring of these events to offset the cost. We wanna give you an opportunity to come in, whether you're with the Ford Insurance Group or not, to listen to a bunch of top producers, top agency owners talk about the business and provide their perspective and experience. So if you're looking for an opportunity to do just that, then I will advise you to uh, go to EliteAgentSummit.com and uh, you are welcome to uh, join us then. We are still taking tickets. Also, uh, as we'll soon be announcing very soon, uh, we will be into the... Um, uh, I have some training coming up in the next couple of months, actually, actually the next couple of weeks. I have a full 8 to 10 hour training. haven't quite decided what to do exactly yet. Uh, for final expense coming up. I think it's on the, it's like two weeks from now, something like that. Two weeks or four weeks, three weeks, something like that. Um, I think it's two weeks from Friday. Uh, we're going to basically teach you my entire final expense face-to-face -face marketing system on YouTube live at no expense to you. Again, this is going to be an eight to 10 hour training. I'm going to teach you exactly what I teach my agents. There's absolutely no expectation to join or pay a dime. I'm getting the carriers and some product vendors to uh, carry the cost. So uh, I, I think today's the second, third, fourth, fifth. So it's yeah, it's it's the 19th. I think it's August 19th. Uh, that's going to be going on all day Friday, and then September 2nd, we have a Medicare Sales and Marketing Mastery that's going to be on YouTube, totally free. No expectation to join, no expectation to buy anything from us. It's going to be free on YouTube, completely sponsored by a number of uh, Medicare carriers. And Luis Moreno is going to teach that. And we're going to teach our whole system of having a successful annual election period. I decided to step it up with the content uh, and uh, provide as much as I can for free. And uh, so expect here in a couple of days uh, some big, juicy live training that you guys can bite into um, at no expense to you. So uh, that is what will be coming up along with the Elite Agent Summits as well. So again, as you're joining the call here, uh, this is your call, Q&A. You have questions, I have answers. So feel free as we move through the next segment here, comments from the haters, to throw your questions into the chat. And I will most certainly be uh, ready and willing to answer them. Dragon, how you doing? Thanks for being here. Aubrey, you too. Tom, greetings and salutations. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. So let's start comments from the haters. My favorite segment to do. Um, I love hate mail. If you guys hate me, just shoot me an email. Go to davidbeford.com forward slash contact. I'll make sure your hate message 
is uh, adequately displayed on a future program or installment of comments from the haters. <laughs> But I like to occasionally get some some negativity. Most of the time, everybody's pretty nice, congenial, friendly, even if they disagree. Uh, but sometimes you get some rabid people who have lost their minds and feel like they have to, uh, you know, have a bone to pick with me on whatever opinion or perspective that I have. And uh, what we're going to be doing is go over and over some of these. Uh, it's funny. A lot of these, some of these are pretty nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these are in, you know, and have the intention of uh, being, you know, honest, but maybe they come off a little snarky. So it's kind of somewhere in between uh, as we go through this. A lot of these come through a couple of um, uh, uh, sources. Uh, predominantly, I have a review of Primerica. I get a lot of Primerica representatives uh, that come on and like to tell me how bad whole life is. So you get to hear a little bit about that. And my Dave Ramsey reviews, uh, Dave Ramsey's perspective, which very close to Primerica, if you <laughs> haven't experienced that yet, uh, you got some true believers when it comes to that as well. All right, so let's get started. Oh, I know, Abinate, I appreciate the nice thing. I'm not, I, I know what I know, but it's always kind of fun to kind of poke back a little bit just for the entertainment factor for you guys. Okay, so this is from Mr. Brett. He says, you can sell whole life Life insurance all you want. Just keep that nasty product away from me. You should be ashamed of yourself for selling whole life insurance. So if you're new to insurance, again, just assume you are, whole life insurance is a type of insurance product. It lasts forever as long as you pay the premium. Sometimes you can pay off the premium and it still lasts forever. The, can the coverage doesn't cancel due to age or health. And if you're eligible, it's first day full coverage for natural and accidental death. In the realm of final expense, this is a good product. Why? Because our final expense prospects are typically older. They're typically not as healthy. And if you present to them the alternative to whole, which is considered to be term insurance, they largely cannot qualify it, but, uh, for it because of their health. But there's a bigger issue at hand. It is the nature of the problem we're looking to solve. And this is where a lot of the termites, the true believers, um, of the insurance world kind of seemingly miss. And it's just the, it's this idea that um, a product is bad or inherently or it's, a, it's, it's immoral. A product is just a product. What you do with the product, uh, arguably there are better solutions than others. And it depends upon the nature of the problem the client has. And we reach into our tool bag of insurance products to pull out the one that most likely solves the problem in a totality. The problem a lot of termites have is they believe that term is the end game. It's alpha and omega. It doesn't matter what your problem is, term insurance is always the answer. And this is what I would call kind of like extremist, black, white, uh, low IQ, frankly thinking, that kind of misses the nuance of what we're trying to accomplish in the sense of helping people. And the perfect example of this is in the final expense world. Our clients, agreeably, I want to get them the most coverage, but the problem with term beyond the health insurance issue or the health qualification issue, which again, a lot of termites don't understand because they don't deal with a older population where seven out of 10 of the apps get declined with term. The bigger problem with term insurance is that it doesn't match the problem the client has. What's the problem a client has who's elderly, fixed income and health issues, you may ask? Well, the problem is, is the client, it needs coverage no matter when they die. And when you buy a term insurance, you have the risk of outliving it. Again, I tell my agents, this is a great like thing you can say to your clients selling whole life insurance. Do you plan on dying before 80 or after 80? And that usually your clients look at and you're like, ah, I hope I live past 80. And then you point to them and say, exactly. So why would you buy a term plan that may terminate before you? So again, the problem with term is it doesn't match the need of what the client situation is. Again, you'll see a lot of clients say, but, but wait a minute, you know, why can't you just snowball your debt and put the money back and save it? Well, that, that's better than they can buy a term, but it, it misses the point. The, the, prospect, the, the people we're talking to, these termites, they don't understand your client is not somebody in their 30s or 40s they're most likely going to deal with. That's different. It's a different animal. But the problem our clients also have is they may not have enough time to save enough money to be buried with dignity or have their funerals with the dignity that they serve. And that's where a whole life plan comes into 
uh, favor. And again, uh, not to uh, ironically quote A.L. Williams with the stinking thinking. Of course, they did not like whole life either. They used to call it trash value whole life. Um, this is kind of the stinking thinking that is problematic in this business, to say the least. Um, all insurance products are, ladies and gentlemen, are tools in the tool bag to solve problems to various degrees. Arguably, some tools are going to be better than others. I wouldn't take a hammer to a screw, right? So likewise, but the, the problem, the ultimate issue and responsibility we have as an agent is to look for what tool and be knowledgeable of what tools are going to best solve the client's problem. So that means listening to the problem of the client, qualifying them, figuring out health-wise what they qualify for, what are, they, what are their goals, what do they want to accomplish, considering the pros and the cons, and then making a recommendation best suited for them. That is your job as an insurance agent, not to blindly push one product over another. Uh, it is to help a client solve the problems. <laughs> this is from William from the Primerica thread. I should report your ass to FINRA for defamation. First of all, I don't have a Series 6 or 67, so sorry. Second of all, I think, maybe not though, I think we live in the United States of America where there's a thing called a constitution, right? Where we have this thing called a First Amendment rights to express an opinion. So, um, but maybe not. I, in this, this day and age, eh, you know, who knows? <laughs> sometimes you can say things, sometimes you can't. Uh, this one's from Ryan. I just started with Primerica. I didn't fully read your article. <laughs> I'm going to give you my opinion, but I'm not going to read your article all the way. But I'm going to tell you what I think about this article, even though I didn't actually read the article. Mainly because a lot of it seems far more than biased, but I did skim through it. <laughs> Perfect. Somebody like halfway understands it so they can give me a full throttled answer. I don't feel that you're being fair with a lot of the things you said, but since you have no actual experience with Primerica, I'm not too worried about it. And I'll get back to that in a minute. And in my experience so far, Primerica is so much more than just an insurance company. They help people get out of debt and prepare for the future. And I'll agree with all of that 100%. Personally, my trainer does not talk about targeting seniors at all. Again, part of the thing I talked about in this post, again, if you read the post, <laughs> is talking about how in some cases, a product is not always suited as the best option. Again, this is factually true of any product. That's like me selling a final expense plan to a 20-year-old. It probably isn't a good idea in most cases. Sometimes it might be, but rarely is it ever. I think that you're more focused on making money through sales, sales, sales. And one of the best parts about Primeric, in my opinion, is that I don't have to sell, sell, sell people, family, and friends and products that they don't want and don't need. Uh, are there bad apples of Primerica? Probably. There are bad apples of every company ever. Maybe I should just got luck and got in the right team. I don't know. So let's wish you good luck. Yeah. So I think a couple of things here. Number one, don't you know pretend to have a, a perspective unless you actually read the material. At least you admitted you didn't. So it is what it is. Second of all, um, I get this sometimes a lot from people like, hey, you never work for XYZ company. How can you have an opinion on them, man? Like, you don't know what it's like, man, to like work for this company because you never did, right? Well, the truth is, sure, I didn't. And no, I don't have that firsthand experience. But when you've been in the business long enough and you've cultivated an understanding of how the business runs from different perspectives, even from a third party standpoint, me looking from the outside in, you can convey kind of some, some general ideas like, hey, XYZ carriers low commission or ABC company does a lot of recruiting. That's kind of what they're about. And therefore, maybe you should consider where you want to hang your hat. Do you really want to recruit with a big MLM? Do you really want to give up commission for this idea that you're in you know, some cult, you know, or this idea that you're getting help and you're not really getting anything added or extra? Um, bottom line, uh, it's not really something that is in my opinion, uh, I can give an opinion on. I, th I can give an opinion on that. That's, that's no big deal. Um, just because you haven't done something doesn't necessarily mean that your opinion or perspective is invalid. I'm getting there, retired Intel guy. We got, we got haters all over the place here. Hold on. This is continuing from Mary. This is uh, on, I guess, Primerica. This guy barely knows about the company. He uses another company to get people in his company how to listen to someone who has never been in a company, kind of a continuation of the point I made. It's like requesting a job at McDonald's and asking an employee of Burger King asking if McDonald's works or not. Again, if I work at Burger King and I see McDonald's like 
uh, using rotten meat to cook and serving that to clients, I think it's completely obvious that I can have an opinion like maybe you shouldn't eat that nasty burger, right? Uh, in other words, if I think a, an agent shouldn't join a company because the commissions are incredibly low, that they don't own their book of business, that the leads are recycled a million times over and they don't you know, have the best opportunity, I think as somebody who understands the business of insurance sales, I can make a perspective on that. I have friends in the company that are successful, don't believe in someone who doesn't work for FINRA. Uh, appeal to authority is what we call that in the argumentative world. Uh, bottom line, um, I don't need to be a part of FINRA to see the obvious. Okay. Chris, hi David, interesting article. You bring a lot of valid points about Primerica. However, as a representative of six years, must tell you that I find the concept, <laughs> I love this one. I, I find the concept of selling elderly people just at, with just enough money to get buried thoroughly unscrupulous, as in questionably ethical. Not that your motives aren't pure as indeed as we hope they all are. My goal personally when I was recruited to help people avoid the same pitfalls that troubled my own family. I, you know, so is it wrong morally to sell anything to anybody? I guess if the product's bad or you're pushing it against their will, uh, it's a vice, or I could, I could understand the, the ethical implications and argument there. But if somebody's that sound mind, regardless of their age, and they have a need for this stuff, that's unscrupulous. Are you kidding me? So on one hand, I think this is, you know, stinking thinking like A.L. Williams says. Um, if somebody wants insurance, sell it to them. If they have a need and a desire, there's nothing unscrupulous about that. Um, second of all, thank you for thinking that. I need less competition in this business, right? I mean, there are literally people out there, I've heard this a number of years, like, oh, that's terrible that you're selling some kind of peddling some kind of burial insurance product or life insurance to some unsuspecting senior. It's like, well, what other options do they have? You're, you're showing your ignorance. These people make $1,000 a month. It's not like they're sitting on 50000 under their mattress, most cases. You know, they're living paycheck to paycheck. They need to make room to have a burial policy because if they don't pay it, then their kids get left with the bill. And that ain't fair either. Again, just lack of perspective. People shouting out opinions that don't really have much basis, in my opinion. This is from Buddy. Uh, come on, David, if you're gonna post a review, give us everything. <laughs> also reach out to me if you need a proofreader. I caught at least two mistakes, LL joke, kind of, sort of. <laughs> I admit my writing sometimes isn't perfect. I probably have two to 300 blog posts, written a couple of books with some typos in it. Uh, I'm not perfect, I never said I was. As long as the idea gets across. Uh, that's fine. And of course, the last piece of hate mail here before we go to your questions in the chat. So again, if you're coming on board here, you got questions, please throw them in the chat. Now's the time to load them up. I'm going to spend some time answering any questions you have about sales, uh, insurance sales, insurance marketing, etc. The last one, David, you're an embarrassment to your family. Please get a real job. Aren't you tired of being a loser? Please save your mother from the embarrassment. And guess who this is from? Robbie DuFord, <laughs> some some lost life or lost long lost cousin, uncle. I don't know. Apparently, somebody in the family thinks I've screwed up big time. So, my mom, she's very proud of me. So the way things have turned out. <laughs> so that's it for the hate. So if you've got hate mail and you would like to be featured on the next program, it's very simple. Go to uh, davidduford.com forward slash contact. Send me your nasty messages. I'll be happy to uh, preview them, uh, feature them in a future comments of the haters, or comments from the haters Q&A. Or just read my articles and yell at me there too. That works too. Okay. Now let's move over to the questions. So guys, as you pop in here, you are uh, got questions. This is really the true purpose of this is to help you kind of with the questions you got about the industry. Anything and everything is completely on the table. Happy to help you. Uh, Aubrey says, so I've been looking for the right IMO and you're my top candidate, but Jason Final Expense has thrown shade on your name even though you have done a, a show together. I don't know why he would even think that, but I'd like to know what you think. I don't know what you're talking about, Aubrey. I've never felt that has been the case. Uh, he's always been straightforward with me uh, and very direct. There's never been any kind of... Um, I've never felt like there's been any kind of like put off or anything like that. So you'd have to be more specific with how you mean, but um, 
I don't get that. Uh, thank you, Ab. Uh, C Dragon. I asked before, which are the initial carries you contract for new agents? So I like, well, not, not so much depending on face amount. It depends on whether you want to do telesales or face-to-face. -face. So if I'm selling final expense, I want to make sure that I am, uh, depending on how I do telesales or face-to-face, -face, I want to pick the right carriers. So when you do telesales, you want to eliminate the requirement to do an electronic signature, okay? Um, an electronic signature for a client, and, and as Paula says for Mildred, if you can picture a 75-year-old lady or male, they can't figure out how to get on their email and access what they need to in order to sign the application. Like it's it's bad to build a business model and telesales around electronic signatures, okay? You will lose deals unnecessarily. So what you want are carriers that are telesales focused, that have verbal authorization policies or practices to verbally record the signature from the client. So they're not, they're not responsible for anything but um, putting their information verbally over the phone to sign it. Okay. So like what I, what carriers do I like? Well, the ones that we typically start agents off are include Royal Neighbors, Prosperity, Aetna, Guarantee Trust Life, and Great Western. There's a few more that do well, like American Amicals does a great telesales product. Um, a couple others I'm drawing a blank on that uh, Trinity Family Benefits also really good. Uh, but you want to have carriers that don't require an electronic signature first and foremost. And, and there are some good ones out there. You don't have to worry to do that. Okay, but rule of thumb, what are the primary carriers you start with? Now, if you're doing face to face, all those telesales carriers do work face to face. There are a few that I prefer over others, like Aetna's great, but the issue I see with a lot of agents doing Aetna is that a lot of their apps submitted don't get approved. Um, and I'd rather use a carrier with similar underwriting to Aetna that gets stuff issued immediately uh, or gets a decision either way immediately. And Forrester's face to face is a good choice, is a good alternative to Aetna face-to-face. -face. But otherwise, Prosperity, World Neighbors, Trinity Family Benefit, Guarantee Trust Life. I like AIG for guaranteed issue face-to-face -face just because it pays better. It pay, There's no cap on commissions, on advanced commissions like Great Western is, um, and it uh, pays a little better. So, uh, and cash flow is king in this business. You got to get paid very well, all right? So those are my carriers. Are there other carriers out there? Absolutely. In fact, there's a lot of good carriers nowadays. All you got to do is pick four or five and then run with them. Where are the haters? Uh -huh. Hopefully that is as hateful as it gets. How you doing, retired Intel guy? Daniel, hey, Primerica agents are not professionally trained in any way, shape, or form. I know I've been in charge 30 plus years. <laughs> I was about to say, well, maybe not all of them. Now, some of them are good, okay? I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to totally diss them all. There's always bad apples like that Primerica agent had said. But um, it's just this idea that, and Dave Ramsey does the same stuff too, guys. There's a video I'm making. He, an, A Lincoln Heritage rep called into one of his programs, and I caught the clip where he's talking about uh, how it's a terrible decision. He did say, you make your own mind up, but he's basically saying, yeah, here's why I think whole life is bad. Here's the problems with it. And, and it just showed a lack of perspective and understanding of what the final expense market is relative to the whole life market, right? Kind of like the bank on yourself strategy or whatever. And uh, they just kind of poo-pooed the whole final expense market. So I'm going to do a response or uh, react video to that momentarily. I'm getting, it's in editing right now. Uh, so, uh, but that's that kind of like just, you know, binary thinking that doesn't have any kind of seeks to understand or understand why or perhaps questions this kind of just like black and white system of thinking it's just it's low iq uh it's not intelligent and and it disservice it does a disservice to millions of people if you're so against whole life that you're willing to tr thrust them into a term plan of which they may outlive if they even qualify it for it i mean i just think that's just it's silly uh, uh a, an, an infantile way to think Paula says, I'm just angry that David is using my photo for Mildred. <laughs> That's not you. <laughs> hey, Willie, what's up? I'm also looking for the right IMO. Can you run those date times again for YouTube Live all day trainings? Yeah. Uh, one's going to be so, so second, third, fourth, fifth. It's going to be the 19th, August 19th. That's going to be on YouTube. The Elite Agent Summit in Atlanta is August 26th. That's an in-person one. The YouTube one's, of course, virtual live. Then we're going to do one the following week on September 2nd, getting ready for AEP. That one's on YouTube. 
Then we're going to do one in um, on September 23rd in Dallas, Texas. That's another Elite Agent Summit. Um, EliteAgentSummit.com if you're interested in ticket for that. It's 50 bucks, super cheap to 10. We're offsetting most of the costs or sponsorships. And then I'm actually partnering with uh, Kenny and Ethan at Medicare Millennials. Somewhere in the mix there, they're going to host a paid uh, program. They're very good Medicare agents uh, to come on and basically walk them through their entire Medicare sales and marketing system. So if you're on my email newsletter, you will get blasted to death about that too as well. Hey, Time Creator, Digital IMO posted an ad on Facebook. Uh, one of their agents did 113000 on 97 final expense application in July, only selling Prosperity. Uh, do you believe this? I think it's possible. Um, again, I don't know what the details are. Um, that's pretty impressive, I would say. There's actually somebody on, and I remember talking to Prosperity. There was a person that posted like 700000 in four months with Prosperity. I'm, it's not exactly right, but it was this year. The, 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 one of the top of the food chain there was telling me about it. And I was like, who is this? Where is he from? And he's like, hey, he goes, goes out and door knocks people and works people that way. And I'm like, you serious, man? So I don't know if I got the full scoop on that. But um, yeah, no, it's possible to write that much business for sure. Can you, uh, and it just takes a lot of effort, a lot of leads. Um, and, and and that's a very good accomplishment. Tyler, can you have success selling final expense in Nashville, Tennessee? And what is an ideal part-time sales? Yeah, Nashville's great. Um, Evan McGuffey who does a lot of Medicare with us, did a ton of final expense there, uh, did just fine. Now he popped around different parts of the country. But Nashville's a great market, especially the surrounding areas. I've got an agent out of Nashville. I've had agents out of Nashville for years. It's done well. I live in Chattanooga too. I never traveled all the way up to Nashville, but in, in the many years I've recruited, I've had lots of agents in the middle Tennessee area. It's been pretty good. Um, and what is an ideal part-time schedule? Just as much time as you can. Um, a couple of evenings during the week, and I would recommend all day Saturday until you're up and running full time. That's what I did when I first started. I had a personal training gym. Uh, I didn't want to give that up quite yet. I wanted to do final expense first to see if it actually uh, panned out and worked well. And it did. But I started part time, worked a couple days during the week, and then all day Saturdays. Hey, David. And then, guys, Q&A time. Questions are in the chat. Once I get to the bottom of this, if there are no more questions, I'm done. David. Dave, I'm considering a new career selling Medicare supplements and Advantage plans. I'm retired at 75. I was a full line agent many years ago. But am I really too old to start over? No, of course not, David. I think my oldest agent was um, before he hit, you know, I would say he hit the bricks. <laughs> before he really retires. He's like 85. Like I, I've always, funny, up until maybe the last couple of years ago, my average agent has always been in, his 40s or 50s. You know, a lot of men that, that I would say they would argue they experience ageism, couldn't get a job in corporate America anymore. And it's like, well, you know, might as well, I'm overqualified, start over, right? So I've always trended a little older, I think, uh, than the average agency, although that's changed a bit. There's a good bit of young people as well, you know, men and women in their 20s and 30s. Uh, but no, 75 is fine. Uh, I had an agent for many years working my uh, telesales leads, John was probably 80, so he started when he was 75, 76, worked up to about 79 or 80. So yeah, no, you're fine. And at least you can relate to your clients, right? Because they understand what it's, you understand what it's like to have Medicare and, you know, the pros and the cons. And, you know, not only are you a customer, you're the president of your agency, you know, like the hair club for men ad, right? You're welcome, Shelton. Glad you got the discount for AHIP. Um, if you guys are interested in the discount for AHIP for Medicare Advantage, um, I think it's, uh, let me make sure I got the right, uh, I'll put it in the chat here. Uh, if you're if you're looking for $50 off on the AHIP, whether you join me or not to sell Medicare Advantage, um, check the chat out. If you want to just go there and, and put your name in, we'll send you a discount link. And uh, that way you get 50 bucks off of AHIP. That's the requirement to sell Medicare Advantage. Uh, if you're going to do Medicare this annual election period coming up in October, you need a hip, so just get fifty dollars off. Just go there, put your name into the email, and then you'll get the uh, an email that has the discount link. You just click on it; and it it, it uh, puts it into the checkout at the discount. Hey Jerry, are your agents able to sell policies that use captive agents? Example in my area: Viva has a five star MA that appears superior. Um, I don't. 
there are some companies that are captive in the Medicare space that nobody can work for unless you're an actual employee of the company. And it varies. I don't know if Viva is or not. The only carriers we're going to be able to contract you with are the ones that are based on the independent distribution model. So there may be some, like I think Kaiser in California, I don't know if it still is, has always been captive. And everybody out there loves Kaiser apparently and would love to sell them, but then you got to give up everything to sell for them. So it's a little bit of different. It's a quandary. Dave Ramsey has a strong following, mostly poor advice unless you have zero discipline. Yeah, I'll give Dave Ramsey some credit here, uh, retired Intel guy. At least he tells people to do the fundamentals, you know, like save money, don't waste it, get rid of your credit cards, pay down your debt, have a strategic focus. I can, I can, I can re respect that. Um, but you just like everybody, I don't have all the best advice in the world. You know, I just because I'm an insurance man doesn't mean I know everything about insurance. Just because somebody's a financial guy doesn't mean he knows everything about financial stuff, right? So um, I just wish at some point some of these people would would step back and say, "Hey, I don't, I'm unfamiliar with final expense, so you understand it, it's not my deal, and I'm not going to make an opinion." At least they're honest. That the problem when people don't do that, like Dave, it's just it's just it, it, ignorance. He's probably never heard of final expense, or if he did, and he could have explained. So there's a lot of details there that just it irritates me, you know. So um, I would rather hear, "Hey." That sounds a little different. Don't know exactly about it. Let me look it up and research it. There, there's some respect out of that too. Hey, David, do you have, hey, Ronald, do you have term insurance carriers that offer living benefits and what commissions you pay out? If so, um, uh, davidduford.com forward slash commissions, guys, if you want to see the carriers that I have, I'm going to put it in the chat as well. Uh, you can see what commission levels we pay on certain products. Um, we do have products that sell living benefits. Um, I'm trying to think of surety does. Um, Mutual of Omaha does too as well a few of the other ones uh, we're not heavy in the living benefits market because that's more non-med term mortgage protection we're really in the senior market we offer those products but I don't offer training of how to prospect for mortgage protection type of prospects so we have it but we're not like we have the products but not the training right just full transparency and David Neal who do you recommend for leads for telesales in the final expense in MedSup world uh, most digital, uh, so so in telesales, I look at it two different ways. You can have a good live transfer vendor, and if you get enough volume in of a quality transfer vendor, you can do pretty well. Uh, we're in the process of uh, beta testing one that's approached me. Seems like they're doing good a good job. We're going to have a couple agents try it out. If it's good, we're going to roll it out to everybody in our group. Um, also, a decent Facebook lead vendor that offers statewide leads is good too in large quantities. I think the thing you have to understand if you do telesales and final expense, at least it's a numbers game. You got to know your presentation. You got to know of that, of course, but you got to have enough people to call on that are fresh and exclusive leads. Um, you don't want to work aged leads predominantly. It's okay if you start with them in some cases or have to supplement with them in some cases. There is, a, there is an argument to be made that you can practice with them. That's fine. Um, but I have some qualms against that uh, and as, as far as it affects your mindset about buying leads. Uh, and I can explain that if you'd like. But generally speaking, fresh exclusive Facebook leads on a statewide level is generally what I recommend buying in large quantities. Tim, do you have a central technology system to shop the different companies to find the best deal instantly while on the phone? Uh, I would look at fextoolkit.com, uh, insurancetoolkits.com. Uh, they have a product like that for final expense. It will quote you and show you what the client's eligible to qualify for. It's both a quote or an underwriter. Uh, you can do all that on the phone. You just have to input the prescriptions, health information, and how much coverage you're looking for and the demographic details of the client. Agents are concerned about a drastic increase in final expense policies charging back. In your experience, how many of the final expense policies in your agent's written stick percentage-wise? So I don't know the exact numbers, but... They're not so low. The percentage is not so bad that, you know, it's causes this like tsunami of chargebacks. Because here's the thing in my business. Remember, I make money when a, when an agent makes a sale. Well, when they make get chargebacks, not only do I get chargeback on my percentage of the commission, but if that agent is buried in chargebacks and can't pay it back, that, that rolls up to me. I am co-signing on hundreds and hundreds of agents when they join my agency that says, I will pay the debt if they don't. There are obviously consequences of that, of course, uh, to the agent in a lot of different ways. 
Um, we pursue agents that don't pay chargebacks. Um, but if chargebacks are so bad, I wouldn't be in business. I would be encumbered with tremendous amounts of debt and it would not be a, a lucrative enterprise. So understand from an aggregate perspective, from the entirety perspective, Corey, chargebacks are real, but they're not so bad that they totally crush me. Okay, why is that the case? Because we teach agents how to sell properly to avoid chargebacks. You can't avoid them all, but you can minimize them. How do you minimize them? Well, you, first of all, you pick the right carriers and you sell the right way. You don't oversell, you sell to the client's need, you're doing, you don't do a high pressure pitch. You do a good job of pre-qualifying and building the urgency in a non-pressure way. And you have options for carriers so that your client's not getting, frankly, ripped off with the wrong policy that can be replaced based off of price or getting a better policy for underwriting coverage, right? So these are all things we, we, we teach agents to do. Um, for me, 80 to 85% first year persistency is as good as an aggregate. There are carriers like Trinity Family Benefit, our persistency is in the mid 90s, low to mid, like 93 to 96%, depending on the year, which is fantastic first year persistency. I um, mean, there are carriers maybe a little bit lower for whatever reason. Maybe they're a higher priced carrier or something like that. So, all in all, though, um, chargebacks are something you can manage. Now, my argument here, one of the other th elements of this that may be baked into this, Corey, is we think about inflation going up. We think about the economic situation we're in. How's that going to affect? our business. I'm hopeful much more for our business directly in the senior market than the non-senior market as being strong, even if there's an economic retraction. And the reason is, is that A, our clients receive a check from Uncle Sugar every single month. They get paid consistently. They always have. It would be an upending of the social order if, if the uh, Uncle Sam social security checks didn't come in anymore. And it would be political consequences to the Congress critters involved to protect the, you know, privileges that have been granted to the people, right? So they don't want that. They don't want to lose power. And um, we're also at the point of, of a client's life where they're more likely to look death a little bit more honestly in the eyes. Whereas maybe someone in my age group, it's like, yeah, I could get by without having life insurance for a while, right? But somebody in their 50s, late 50s, 60s, and 70s, They've known people who've died. They've experienced it personally in most cases. So it's a different type of psychological experience to where death is more tangible as opposed to maybe somebody who's under financial duress younger uh, just feels like, ah, eh, coming up with the money for life insurance, I can wait till I'm in a better situation, right? So all of this is to say, I think our business is better suited for an inflationary environment, for a recessionary environment than some of the other markets out there. I feel pretty good about it actually. Hey, Angel, what's up with Royal Neighbors not answering their email to get contract with them? Is, is the company worth my time for my clients? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you want me to help you, email me. I can try to get you. I can actually get you in touch with somebody, Angel, if you want me to. Um, and uh, just go to davidford.com forward slash contact. If you've got my email, just reply to any of those. I'll put you in touch with uh, one of the guys over there. They can help you. Best time of the year to sell Medicare? Probably annual election period. So that would be coming up in October. The second best time would be open enrollment period. That's uh, the first quarter of the year, March, January through March. And then throughout the late spring, summer, it's a little harder because you don't have open enrollment. You just can run SEP, special election period, or turning 65. But pretty much all year is good to sell this stuff. You know, uh, that's what we teach at DeFord Insurance Group. We're not just an annual election period strategy agency. We're teaching agents to sell this stuff all year long. We've got lots of success stories that prove it is very possible. Hey, Daniel, one last question. If I join your IMO, is the training for telesales included for final expenses and Medicare Advantage? Yes to both. Victor, advice for a new agent on leads with a tight budget. Uh, so my recommendation, um, what's tight budget? Um, I would say it's anything less than $500 a week. If that's the case, I would be either doing some kind of seminar marketing strategy. That's a low to no cost strategy to get in front of seniors at living facilities. We teach agents how to do this in my agency to generate a couple of sales. One or two sales usually is, is the average, but it's cost free for the most part. So it's all return on investment to build a bankroll to reinvest back in the leads. That strategy is pretty good. Uh, one of the things I've started to recommend now, don't, don't like, you know, throw me out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's it's optional. You don't have to do this if you join my agency. But I think it is something that can work if you have the right mindset and perspective and you work it the right way. I do think selling insurance to people you know, like friends, family, etc., is good. 
then there is a way to do it without them like not inviting you to parties anymore or, you know, holidays and stuff, you know, but uh, people do want to buy from people they know, like, and trust. And if you're in a situation where money's tight and if you can sell a couple policies or maybe roll an annuity over that kind of thing, it's your bankroll to then buy leads. So I don't, I don't ease, I used to dismiss it all the time. I used to uh, be a part of my kind of typical, you know, uh, thing that I dismiss, but I'm open-minded to it. I don't at all require my agents to do it that join. But if we're looking for ways to self-finance, uh, you can't dismiss that as an option because there are people in your immediate sphere of influence that'll buy from you. Uh, John, hey David, how did you get go about getting leads while selling part-time? Pretty much the same way you do it full-time. I did direct mail leads. It's what I recommend for face-to-face -face final expense agents. I just drop mail and when I could, I'd go work them and just consistently kept up a disciplined schedule of activity. Really wasn't any more, more difficult than that. Steve, do you believe uh, or train agents to become the completely trusted agent for their clients or primarily single product experts? Yeah, great question, Steve. Uh, both. Here's the thing. Um, anybody that has had success in life <clears throat> will tell you that focus is critical to get to the area they've got to. If you don't focus your efforts in that small bandwidth of attention that you have and try to disseminate it between multiple opportunities, you'll find no opportunities in that. People who are, who are wildly successful are deeply uh, in the knowledge of just a few things, not of everything. The Renaissance man ideal here, you know, I know a lot about a lot of things, is, is not the norm. Uh, most people who are exceptionally good are really good at one thing. Like I'll, a perfect example, Anthony Martin. Anthony Martin runs choicemutual.com, uh, multimillionaire in production, uh, develops 2,000 leads a week, not a week, a month, probably more than that, uh, in final expense exclusively. Um, his knowledge base, intelligence, and depth is all in final expense. Um, that's why he makes so much money. And it's also in, in search engine optimization, website design. He's a genius in that. But he doesn't know anything about YouTube because that's not where his knowledge base is. He, was, he and I were talking. He said, Dave, I just found out I couldn't go back and edit my YouTube videos like I can my articles. And I'm like, yeah, you got one shot, man. <laughs> and then you upload and that's it. You can always upload a new one. But, you know, he didn't know that. I'm like, well, I've been doing videos forever. Why didn't you know that? Well, that's because I had the knowledge base, not because he wasn't any. He certainly extremely intelligent. But the point is, is that that's kind of what it takes to be successful at life is you got to find your thing. You got to find that horse and ride everything on it all the way. OK, and you see this time and time again. However, I do think once you've developed a base level of expertise uh, in a product, I don't think it's a bad idea to start considering cross selling. It may not be for you, but I think at some point, maybe six, 12 months, 24 months later, you should consider diversifying your income streams and getting into another product line. What we do at DeFord Insurance Group is integrate Medicare into the mix, specifically Medicare Advantage. Since that most of our agents start with final expense, Medicare Advantage is a good cross-sell. Most of our clients have Medicare, and a lot of them can benefit from us helping them get a better Medicare Advantage plan. Plus, it develops passive income, where all we've been working on really is a first-year-driven income. So it's a good thing to have in addition to, um, excuse me, in addition to uh, selling the cross sell, the fire first year final expense product. The worst thing you can do, Steve, and anybody else here is considering this business, is to do all of it at the same time. To come in and try to be a generalist, to think that you're going to have deep knowledge on multiple products with different driving emotional, emotional factors and different qualification factors and stuff to know, to think that you have the headspace to do this uh, is arrogant. No offense. Um, do yourself a favor and just do one thing. I assure you there is this effect that I, that I see recruiting agents as I always have for a long time, that everything is always easier in your position, looking you as in everybody, looking from the outside in. You know, you got this guy here on YouTube, he simplifies the learning process and makes it easy to understand. It gets you excited and that's good. But the reality is applying it as a new person, there is all this fear of what if I screw up, the risk of putting your money into the leads, thinking on your feet, actually in front of a prospect or on the phone with them, like the entirety of the circumstances change when you're doing the thing that you used to just watch about, right? 
So all of this is to say everything's way more complicated when you do it versus when you think about doing it or witness other people talking about it, right? So that's why we recommend one product to start with, but then over time, gradually implementing the other ones. Again, uh, reminder, if you've got questions, throw them in the chat. Once we get wrapped up here, uh, we're going to end it. So um, throw your questions in the chat. Anything insurance, sales, and marketing. I appreciate everybody's questions so far. hope you enjoyed it. Hey, McGuffles. What's up, Evan? Tim. Do any of the lead companies you recommend do live transfers for telesales? How much cost per transfer? Um, we've got a couple of them. Uh, we've got a TV lead vendor, mid sixties per lead. Uh, you know, it's it's commercial of a grandma in a hospital bed with an oxygen tube in her nose, and you know she just had some health disaster, and daughters by her side, and she's like, "Thank God I got life insurance, honey," and I bought it from. El Jefe's life insurance services, right? And then it gives the number and it calls. It's not actually El Jefe's life insurance services. Make a point. Um, and then that call gets transferred to the agent, right? Live. It's, it's a good quality lead because they're at their climax of interest and intrigue. They're calling a commercial. They're probably pretty interested. Uh, we also are working on beta testing a warm transfer solution uh, from a data source. So that's something we're going to be rolling out to test, at least to begin with. Um, but those are going to be in the upper 30s to lower 40s transfers tend to be more expensive okay because you're talking to people without having to grind it out on the phone to get them on the phone right? how do you uh do you have a book for beginners and how customers benefit from cash value hey was hours that's out of my understanding in the business i mean i like i talked about i have a limited scope of understanding it's traditionally in these simplified issue products like final expense medicare annuities aca uh, running those business models um, I do have a beginner's book. It's the green book, uh, the official guide to selling insurance for new agents. That's a quick read. It just gives you an overarching view of the business and what landmines to watch out for. The final expense book, the official guide to selling final expense insurance is a good book. If you want to learn how to sell final expense, I need to do an update. I actually got a second edition done. I just never bothered to publish it. Maybe I should do that. And then, um, as far as the cash value, you really don't have an explanation of that and, because in the final expense world, was it doesn't really matter. Uh, I have an ongoing feud with, uh, not feud, guy that works in our agency, Mr. John. Some of you who are my agency, unfortunately, know who I'm talking about. <laughs> John likes to sell cash value to his clients on final expense. I never like doing that because when you sell cash value, it detracts from the purpose of what you're trying to accomplish. The purpose of final expense insurance is not the cash value accumulation because it really is terrible. <laughs> if anything, it causes objections if you bring it up. Uh, like, okay, so run some cash value for me. Tell me what it is and get back to me, right? So I just don't bring it up, number one. <laughs> number two, it's besides the point. The point of selling final expense is to get death benefit for peace of mind for the, for the beneficiary and the insured, right? So cash value is not a part of the sales pitch. Uh, so we rarely even utilize it. And I don't teach agents to say anything about it. So from the context of final expense, that's not something we do. Hey, Kevin, what's up? Thanks. Appreciate it, Rob. Hey, yep, McGuffles again. Thank you, Angela. Yeah, Thomas. They, 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 they all, there's like three or four variations of that commercial. Apparently, it works really well to see grandma laid up in bed after a heart attack to sell life insurance. So, <laughs> Cat Daddy, I know you're not a lead vendor, but to your knowledge... What are these different types of internet leads that are sold? They're all Google banner ads. It's it's surveys, you know, fill this out and get a, you know, free iPad stuff and you answer a bunch of questions and it becomes data and people unknowingly are, are agreeing to be called on. It's it's It pervades this entire business. There's a big MLM, by the way, that sells these Google banner ads for $10, $11, and then resells them a couple of times. You'd know them if I said them. And uh, they make a lot, a lot of money off of selling these garbage leads they get for 50 cents, right? So uh, don't buy those. Those are like a glorified cold call, if even that. Um, when I say digital leads, I want like a Facebook lead from a good vetted vendor that actually knows what they're doing. Hey, Angela, do you find uh, you complete more sales with live transfers versus face to face or tells us well so live transfers are a telesales lead mm -hmm. uh, you're only doing live transfers if you're selling over the phone so you wouldn't do it face to face because you have to have a multitude of states to get enough live transfers in to stay busy now if you're doing um 
face to face, um, we want to do direct mail. Direct mail is number one option if you're buying leads, uh, which most of you will be. Number two would be some kind of good Facebook lead. Fresh and exclusive, preferably. Jonathan, I know, right? How does a guy who gives free advice about life insurance sales have haters? I know. Can't win them all. What is your favorite lead type source, Evan? You know what it is, man. What you're working right now. <laughs> direct mail. Um, I'd work direct mail all day long. Um, yes, the price has gone up. Of course, I would ask you to look at the bright side. The higher the price, the less competition in that lead, right? Um, but direct mail just has a better intent uh, for for face to face agents. For the telesales agent, uh, it would be really it's it's interchangeable between an outbound lead like a Facebook lead or an inbound quality TV lead vendor or quality live transfer vendor. Um, but if I'm face to face. I want as much direct mail as I get my hands on. That's where the money's at in this business, 100%. But you, and a good agent can make anything work too, right? So it's not to say, oh, nothing else works. It's just that, again, if I'm a betting man, I want to bet with the best horse, right? The fastest horse, the one that gets the most results. And that generally is direct mail. Hey, Joshua, I just, just wondering, in order to join the Ford Insurance Group, do you need both life and health? Or can you start with one? You just start with one. Um, I started with the life insurance license. I got started with final expense only, went back to get health insurance later. So that's hundred percent fine. Josh was looking to get my life license this week. Yeah. Pick up your license. Just might as well. Cause you're going to sell a lot of that. Spencer, can someone who has never sold insurance jump into Medicare part-time? Sure. What are the best leads for this and weekly recommended budget? I recommend direct mail leads. Direct mail is king. This is if you do like a Medicare advantage strategy. Uh, direct mail is king. Uh, I would do 500 to 600 a week. And understand if you do Medicare to start with, the cash flow is a bit lower. Now, once you have some production behind you, you should be able to get some sponsorship from a lot of these carriers. They will give you money uh, if you are bringing the bacon home, right? So it does get better after like the second or third quarter of your business. Uh, but in the beginning, even part-time, it's just a low cash flow business. Now, if you cross-sell some final expense, you cross-sell some hospital indemnity, that definitely helps. But um, unlike final expense, which is a better first-year commission product to start with, Medicare is a little thinner. But over time, of course, the goal with Medicare is you're going to have, you know, uh, what we talk about in the 500,000 and five years or less video is, is approximately 1,600 Medicare clients on the books, Write 500 a year for five years should be there if you take away attrition out of it. Um, you're making a half million in income a year for life. Again, you got to sustain it, right? You got to, you'll get referrals, but you'll get people cancel. I get that. But the point is to get to that point takes a lot of time and effort and building. It doesn't happen overnight with Medicare. It's a slow, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Also, what about the cost and time to get certified to sell Medicare? Cost $175 for AHIP maybe a week or two of studying, depending on how well you study. Then you get appointed with the carriers, take their credentialing, that's pretty straightforward, and you're ready. So I'd say four weeks, two to four weeks to get appointed. I'd say closer to four to five weeks to get appointed, pass AHIP, and be ready to sell. Retired Intel guy, what are your thoughts on getting a BRM permit and doing your own direct mail leads? I had this question earlier today. I had an agent uh, do a one-on-one -on -one with me. My, my problem with that is that you're getting into the realm of marketing and selling. It's better to pick your poison. Are you a marketer in the insurance business? So you're going to sell leads, generate them for them, or are you going to be a salesperson? Uh, again, it's almost like the same argument I use about not wanting to learn different products. You don't want to overload the requirement of skills that you need to be successful. I think starting in this business, it's best just to buy leads, run those leads, and learn how to sell and get good at that. And once you've established yourself with success, then worry about learning how the marketing side works. That's something that's a little bit harder, takes more time. You have a limited amount of time to do this. More time out of the field is less sales to make, in my opinion, to start off with especially. So I tend to just let the experts do it, outsource it, and worry about running as many appointments as you can. Does your IMO support multiple um, state licenses? I have 33. Yes, we do that. 
and then Time Creator, does your IMO do MIGA? CD type annuities. Yes, we do. We actually had Stephen Burgess on, guys. Uh, Stephen Burgess, longtime annuity trainer with Ford Insurance Group. Uh, he came on and did a training today in one of our daily huddles. Talked about three cases he helped write. One of them was a multi-year guarantee annuity for like $100,000, uh, paid out like 4% and change. Uh, first deal this guy's doing, I think he's going to go back and get more money once he rolls and writes that one. Um, but bottom line, um, with this strategy... Um, he's got annuity. So we can teach you how to do this. Uh, we run a lot of our business through Athene. Um, and uh, it just depends on what you're writing, the length of time, the details, et cetera. But that's something we can teach you. Commission. I don't know. MIGAs pay less than the fixed index annuities. I don't know what they are exactly. If you want to go see it, it's at davidduford.com forward slash commissions. You can go see what the comp grids are, what we would pay you. I don't know what those are. Most of what we write is the fixed index annuities. That's, I think, 55 to 6.5%, depending on the length of time, the age, et cetera. Um, likewise, McGuffey, for your questions, that if you go there, you'll kind of see some different comp that we pay out depending upon the, um, the agent and the production and the crew that they bring with them. We have different tracks dependent upon uh, personal production, what the comp level is going to be. And then we also have tracks dependent upon if they're a producer or an agency builder. We do support agency building. Now, I don't like force you to do it, but it is something that you can do. And we do have the capability to support you uh, and uh, teach you how to do social media, that kind of stuff to help drive organic leads to you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at the hour end. So I think I'm happy with where we are and what we covered. Uh, if you want to learn more about joining DeFord Insurance Group to sell final expense Medicare annuities or ACA, go to davidduford.com forward slash FAQ. When you roll over there, you'll see all the different products we do, FAQ pages that help explain how things work to see if what we do is a good fit for you, and you'll see what next steps to take if you like what you see. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, leave them in the chat or the comments box below. And if any other questions you have, you're welcome to go to davidduford.com forward slash contact and uh, send me a message there and I will personally receive it and respond. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. Appreciate your time. Hope you have a good rest of your week. Bye. <laughs>